In this video we're going to take our next step with uh, doing Stripe integration with a website and we're going to look at the library of DJ Stripe for doing Stripe integration and making dealing with Stripe a lot easier than what we did in the last episode. We're going to continue on from where we were in the last episode. Everything that we've done so far is relevant except for we'll make a modification to our view but the template is just the same, the settings are just the same and all we need to do is add a couple of DJ Stripe specific settings. First to get started we'll install DJ Stripe with a pip install DJ Stripe and then after that we're going to go into our settings and we'll add DJ Stripe without the hyphen into our installed apps and then follow up that with a migrate. And then at the very end we're going to go ahead and create a super user because that's the easiest way to create a user we're going to need to have a user object available for what we're going to do. And then finally we need to set a setting in our settings file for our Stripe plans. But first if you'll notice here we have our Stripe public key and Stripe secret key. These need to stay the same and specifically like this for DJ Stripe. So we want to create a DJ Stripe underscore plans dictionary in our settings file. And this is what we're going to use when we reference our plans that we have in Stripe. First thing we're going to do is we're going to say this is going to be our monthly plan. We could have multiple of these higher level dictionaries. We could have a monthly, a yearly, a business, whatever. As long as the dictionaries inside have the exact same type of data. We're going to start with a Stripe plan ID, or this is the name of the plan in Stripe that you have set up for this plan. We're going to give it a name and description, and these are both going to be something memorable and not necessarily something that you have to reference. The price we're going to set is it's going to be in penny units since we're going to use the US dollar. We're going to do 900 pennies for $9. We're just basically removing the decimal. So if we did $25, it would be 2500 for the price. And then we're going to set our currency to USD and our interval to month saying that this is going to renew every month. All this is is a reference to plans that already exist in Stripe on their side. We're just recording it here in our settings file. So now we're actually ready to dive into some code. We've dealt with a customer object from Stripe itself but DJ Stripe also comes with a customer object and that's what we want to use. It can have better integration with the site that we're going to build and then in the next episode it'll make everything a little bit easier. But for now we want to anytime we do our form valid we want to get the customer object that is associated with a user. The simplest way to do this that I found is to go ahead and create a mixin for a customer and call it customer mixin. We just create a get customer method in there where we try to get the customer object of the current user in the current request. So we do this with self.request.user.customer that gets our stripe our DJ stripe customer object. And if that doesn't work, then we just go ahead and create a new customer object for the current user. So this basically means that the person that's trying to do a checkout needs to be logged in. So you'd want to do some sort of login required mix in or something along those lines to make sure that somebody is logged in. This is where this is why we set up a super user so that we could at least have someone logged in. So in the demo here in a little bit, I'll already be logged in when we go to run through that example. Then we're going to add our mix in to our subscribe view. And then from there I'm just going to go ahead and delete all the code in form valid and we'll start over fresh because it's going to be real simple. We're going to get our customer object doing our self.getCustomer. And more than likely the customer is going to be a new customer so it's going to be created so that customer won't have a card. So we're going to want to do a customer.update card and we're going to give it that stripe token that we sent in with our form submit. And then from there we're going to subscribe our customer to our monthly subscription that we set up in our DJ Stripe plans settings. And that's it. From there everything will continue to act as normal. This is the exact same thing that we did earlier in the last video except less lines of code and a little more robust. So with that in mind let's go ahead and jump over and do a test and run through this. We're at our subscribe form and I'm already logged in so we'll just go down here and put in our credit card, our expiration date, and our CVC and click on checkout. As you can see it was successful because we went to the thank you for subscribing. If 
we'll jump over to our Stripe dashboard, we can see that we have one new charge for the, right now, it's $9. We have a new customer that was created and we have a successful charge. So this shows us that, hey, we have a customer that successfully subscribed to our service. So let's jump over to our admin for DJ Stripe. And if we're clicking a customer, we'll see that we have that customer object that we created. It has our Stripe ID that it's associated with. It has the user that it's associated with. It has the fingerprint of the card that, is, that it is associated with on Stripe servers. The last four digits of that card. So that isn't enough information for you to be able to steal the credit card number. But it is enough information for you to show your customers so that they can know what card is associated with the account. It also, ha it also lists the type of card it was and the date that the customer was created. And then below that is the current subscription information. I would click into the rest of these, but, most, but all the rest of these are blank. But we'll get filled in in the next episode whenever I go over the Stripe webhooks and how to work with those with DJ Stripe. That way you have good interaction back and forth between Stripe and your servers. And with that, that gets us to our next step of using DJ Stripe to start accepting subscriptions. I recommend you go ahead and give it a look. And setting up webhooks really isn't that hard. But again, in the next video, we'll show you how to do it with little to no pain.